everyone, welcome back to EH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and it's time for my first deck tech from Innistrad Crimson Vow. And of course, it's going to be Tox Real the Corrosive 5 Black Black Slug Horror 7 7. At the beginning of each end step, put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. Creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one for each slime counter on them. Whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter and it dies, create a 1 1 black slug creature token, and you can pay blue and a black sacrifice a slug to draw a card. So, so much going on here. Obviously, Obviously the part that is most buzzworthy I think for a lot of people is this is sort of slug tribal and for anyone wondering yes there are slug creatures already existing in the format there's actually four mono black slugs that we could put in this deck I didn't I, I just threw the one in gluttonous slug it's a one in a black slug horror 03 it's got menace and it's got evolve it's not bad you know it's okay I thought it would be nice flavor wise to at least throw one actual slug in here but really we're going to be relying mostly on our commander's ability because that is such a powerful ability obviously the commander costs seven that's a lot but once we get him out he really goes to town i think this commander is very similar to coma in a way where it takes a lot to get them out but once they get going they really go to town and the reason is because just like coma who has a something that triggers at the beginning of each upkeep tox real triggers at the beginning of each end step which is better because as soon as it comes out it's going to trigger on your end step put a slime counter on each of your opponent's creatures and right away any of those creatures that are one toughness are immediately going to die and you're going to get a 1-1 black slug creature token for all of them and it, you know if I'm playing this deck I'm going to time it appropriately you know like I'm not just going to throw this out there as soon as I can I'm going to wait until my opponents have a lot of creatures out preferably 1-1 one, one creatures because as soon as we play our commander we're immediately going to kill all those 1-1 one, one creatures on our end step it's always a bad strategy to rely on your opponents to do things so we're going to be giving our opponents creatures to make sure that this is going to be triggering as much as we can so ensuring our opponents have creatures i think is going to be key for this deck we want our opponents to have a bunch of creatures before we slam down our commander so that again right on our end step we're going to kill all the ones then on the next opponent's turn on their end step because this triggers every single end step it's going to kill all the twos and then the threes on the next one and the fours so by the time it gets around to our next turn we've already killed all of the creatures with a four toughness in play so our commander is really going to be wiping the board fast but again in order to get any value out of it we want to make sure our opponents have creatures the hunted series works great here particularly hunted phantasm it's going to give our opponent five one one goblin tokens that again are going to die immediately on the first end step that our commander is in play it's also a four six unblockable creature so that's good hunted horror i almost didn't put in this deck because i really don't like the protection from black however like i said we're going to kill all the creatures in play that are for toughness and less before it even gets around to our next turn so i think this is okay these are three three green centaur creature tokens so they're going to die fairly quickly also having a seven seven trample creature for two mana is pretty good on horse of course is going to be fantastic you know we can leave these cards in play for a while to build up those tokens before we play our commander right slaughter specialist also is going to be fantastic in here just came out in the last set and like i said when i put this in my top 10 cards from the set just super fantastic in any deck where you want your opponents to have creatures so that you can kill them right this is exactly what we want in this deck it enters the battlefield and gives each of our opponents a 1-1 creature that's going to die immediately also benefits from it right whenever a creature and opponent controls dies put a plus one plus one counter on slaughter specialist a couple other really funny interesting ones infernal genesis for black black enchantment at the beginning of each player's upkeep that player mills a card then creates an x one one black minion creature tokens where x is the card's mana value this is so perfect in this deck because our opponents are going to mill a card and let's assume it's a four cmc they create four minion tokens they're one ones which is exactly what we want our opponents to have we really really want our opponents to have as many one one creatures as possible because then on their end step they're all immediately going to die from those slime counters and we're going to get that many slugs this is so perfect in the deck and then the tokens that we're creating obviously we just get to keep them so it's a double whammy tombstone stairwell is also going to be fantastic in this deck for this reason this is another card i mentioned on my 10 cards videos that is so good in any deck where you want your opponent's creatures to be dying now our commander only wants creatures with slime counters on them to be dying but we're going to put a whole bunch of stuff in this 
deck like the slaughter specialist that are going to benefit from our opponent's creatures dying because that's going to be happening all the time anyway so tombstone stairwell is going to give every player on their upkeep a 2-2 black zombie creature token for each creature card in their graveyard and then at the beginning of each end step those tokens are destroyed so they are going to die so we're going to be getting dies triggers for all of these tokens that are created the added bonus is we can throw those slime counters on them right so at the beginning of each end step our tombstone stairwell and our commander are going to trigger we put the tombstone stairwell on the stack first so that it resolves last our opponent's creatures do not have to be destroyed by the slime counters they just have to have a slime counter on them when they die in order for us to get the slug so i think this works perfectly here but of course there's a whole bunch of spells in blue that are already just making tokens as a byproduct of what they're doing right curse of the swine pongify most of the removal in blue is going to be giving our opponents a creature token as well so this is a great way where we can get rid of our opponents big creatures or really valuable creatures to them and replace them with a useless token that is then going to die to our commander's ability raven form resculpt right now we can turn those artifacts into creatures that will then die swan song amph and mutineer there's just tons of these effects that we would probably put in this deck anyway and then we get the added bonus of giving our opponent a creature token that can then get killed by our commander and again all of these tokens are for toughness or less so they will all be killed by the time we get around to our first turn with our commander in play acorn catapult is a really interesting one four mana artifact pay one and tap acorn catapult deals one damage to any target that's a pretty usable ability but then that creatures controller or player creates a one one green squirrel creature token so now we're giving them that token that can then die and give us a slug genesis chamber is going to be fantastic obviously whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield if genesis chamber is untapped that creature's controller creates a 1-1 colorless mirror artifact creature token so again these sort of symmetrical effects are fantastic where we're getting all the benefit here we're getting the mirror tokens that we can use for whatever we want we can sacrifice them we got lots of sacrifice effects in this deck of course the ones our opponents are getting are also going to benefit us because we're going to be killing them and then making slugs proliferate will also work here right tezzeret's gambit we draw two cards then proliferate those are slime counters on our opponent's creatures so now we can just proliferate to increase the amount of slime counters on them and kill them faster yogmoth thran physician is just made for this deck i mean pay one life sacrifice another creature put a minus one minus one counter on up to one other target creature and draw a card that ability on its own is okay we want to be sacrificing our creatures so that's good putting minus one minus one counters on other creatures is going to be good because it's going to help us kill them drawing a card is always good and then on top of that we can pay black black and discard a card to proliferate so everything yogmoth is doing is going to be great in this deck kel's fight fixer is also going to be really good in this deck in fact these decks are very similar because you're in a demir sacrifice your own creatures themes there's a lot of cards that can go back and forth between either of these decks i put kel's in this deck because whenever you sacrifice a creature you may pay a demir hybrid mana if you do draw a card well heck we're going to be sacrificing our creatures all the time so pay blue and a black with our commander sacrifice a slug and draw a card now we can pay the one extra mana to draw an additional card kells is also a sack outlet so that's great and some cards that are also great in that kells deck that are great here like nadir kraken and chasm skulker they're going to be benefiting from us drawing cards which we're going to be doing all the time and also they're going to be making us lots of tokens that we can then sacrifice we don't need to just sacrifice slug in this deck the fury's angels insight i think you just gotta throw this one in there if you would draw a card except for the first one you draw on each of your draw steps draw two cards instead so that seems pretty good with our commander's ability and every other sacrifice draw effect we have a few others in this deck as well our opponents creatures are going to be dying all over the place so i threw internal thirst in here i threw malakir Callblade in here of course massacre worm is just a no-brainer i mean it's going to give all our opponents creatures minus two minus two until end turn when it enters the battlefield which is going to speed things along a little bit right but then whenever a creature an opponent controls dies that player loses two life so this guy can just sit and play and as we're massacring our opponent's creatures it's going to slowly kill them it can be a real win con in this deck revel in riches is also a fantastic win con in this deck obviously i have yet to see this card win a game and this is the deck where i think it actually is possible whenever a creature an opponent controls dies create a treasure token and at the beginning of your upkeep if you control 10 or more treasures you win the game so so if this is in play we slap our commander down it is very possible that by the time we get back around to our first upkeep we have those 10 treasures because we've killed all of our opponents
opponent's creatures, assuming our opponents have 10 creatures in play combined, which I think is very likely. Sangromancer is going to be fantastic in this deck because it's going to gain us life every time a creature an opponent controls dies. Yaheni is always great in any deck like this, right? Anytime an opponent's creature dies, we put a plus one, plus one counter on it. It's also a sack outlet. Species Specialist is going to be particularly good in this deck. We can go a couple different ways with this. When it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. Whenever a creature of the chosen type dies, you draw a card. So we can choose Slug, okay? We're going to be making lots of slugs. We're going to be sacrificing them. They might just be dying on their own, right? If we create like 10 slugs and then our opponent board wipes, that'll be 10 slugs dying and we get to draw 10 cards. So you could name slug with this. You could also name other things, you know. If your opponent is playing a certain tribe, like maybe elves, you could name elf with this. And every time one of those Elves die, you get to draw a card. So you don't necessarily have to name Slog, although that might be your best option. I threw Devouring Strosis in this deck because, again, this is just a card from back in the day that I just thought was super cool when I first saw it. And I, I've sort of been waiting for the right deck to stick it in, and I think this might be it. We are going to be making a lot of those Slugs. I mean, you just think about every single time an opponent's creature dies with a slime counter on it, we're getting a Slog. So I think we're going to have a ton of them lying around, and we're not necessarily going want to be sacking them all to our commander's ability that'll get really mana intensive devouring strassus is just a great way to sort of take advantage of all those extra slugs lying around it's five black 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 eight mana phyrixian horde nine nine with flying and trample so it is a giant menacing creature at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice a creature okay that shouldn't be an issue in this deck and we can sacrifice a creature to regenerate devouring strassus that's the part i particularly like i really think regenerate is an underrated ability in commander it protects from all sorts of things. So I threw this in the deck just as a fun, interesting sort of win con for us. I think it fits. Really, really interesting commander, obviously. I mean, there's just so much going on there. It does cost seven. So I did put quite a bit of mana rocks and whatnot in this deck so that we can get up there. However, just like with Coma, again, I'm, I'm making the comparison here because it's one of those decks where it's okay that our commander costs a lot because there's some preparation, I think, that needs to get done, right? I want to do some stuff then I put down my tox reel and I start going to town and once I start going to town shouldn't take too long before things are completely in your control right so really interesting commander super fun deck the deck list for this is in the description below check it out give it a whirl but that is it for today and thanks for tuning in